would like to introduce our next speaker, Matthew, who's going to be taking us back up the stack and away from the bits and the bytes and up to some application level stuff, some uh, what real users get to get to play with on, on the devices that the low level stuff enables. So um, thank you, Matthew. Okay. Thanks, Ben. As as he said, we're doing something a little more news oriented. We're I'm talking about fun and bow uh device ML stack, open source sync ML stack, where we talk providing mobile sync access such as syncing your calendars, your address book, your even your emails to your mobile device. <coughs> such we're basically doing like a Blackberry or um, Apple's mobile we but without without paying or and without the closeness. I've been working with Funball for around three years now. I've started back then uh, I wanted to be able to sync this calendar from my Citadel group web server onto my Palm Trio, so I had a look at Fun and Bowl. Eventually, I wrote a push email connector for Citadel with Fun and Bowl as well. And now I'm running a few add-ons for Fun and Bowl. I'm specking up a new administration interface. I've recently been commissioned by the eGroupware folks to improve my software so I can replace this native sync ML stack with the fun and ball because fun and balls are more common these days. Just to note that fun and ball is a commercially supported operation just like MySQL. I don't, I don't work for them. I'm an open contrib contributor, but I might sound like I do work for them. What we're going to talk about today is all, all over the place. We're going to start with the protocol basics, sync ML, which is what fun and ball implements. We'll have a look at the open source community revolving around Fun and Bowl and get our hands dirty when such with a technical overview of what you want to do if you what you should do or if you want to extend Fun and Bowl to provide your own services to your users. So let's let's dive in. SyncML is an open standard. It was initially a consortium effort by the SyncML Consortium, I don't know who was in that. It's now headed by the Open Mobile Alliance. I don't know who's in that either. <laughs> it's an XML-based protocol. No, it's just well-formed XML, no doc types. There's also a smaller binary XML you can also use if you're bandwidth conscious. It's a command-based model. Each operation is a command. You specify what data you're going to do. There's two flavors. There's sync and device management. What I'm talking about today is device sync. That's what the main Fun and Bowl server is for. We also do provide a Fun and Bowl also provides a device management server by the, from the community, not as well tested or used. So, but it's a common protocol between the two, mostly common. <coughs> SyncML is data neutral. You can push any type of data you want over it. When we're talking about calendars, calendar and address books, I think it's usually VCAL, VCARD 1.0. Recently, Fun and Bowl and others are doing email, which so we have an email encapsulation. There's also folder and file sync. Sync email is transport neutral. Fun and Bowl is implemented over HTTP over network, as as are most others. There's also Bluetooth, the OBEX which is what I sync on Mac OS X users. We also have WAP WSP binary SMS for those who are really daring. We, we do actually use this to provide push, push alerts for new email. There are various sync modes in sync ML. You have slow, fast, refresh, replace from server, anything you and server alerted sync. A slow mode is where each side presents their data to the server. Yeah, it lays it out on the table and the server decides what each side should have. Fast is what you usually fast is what you usually get when you press the sync button. You have you tell you tell the server what last time you synced and the server just, just looks up all the changes from the other data source. And as I said, each side presents databases of which data. The client tells the server which of its data databases correspond to the server. And this Server will look up accordingly. Here's a sample sync ML message. It's, as I said, pure XM, well formed XML, no doc types. Sorry if you can't read it, but here's an example you have. In this case, I'm syncing, I'm syncing to a calendar source on the server from 
and Outlook clients. So the group dev Cal S or V is my server source. The appointment's the client source. The client is replacing an item here. It's with Ancestor V Cal 1.0, as I, as I said, is common. And here's what the server would respond. Unfortunately, I only put this site in last night, and this is the only capture I had, so it had a, f I had a failure response. <laughs> well, that's just a handy demonstration. SyncML is fairly wide ex widely accepted. It's probably the de facto sync solution outside the Blackberries or mobile Mies of this world. It gets SyncML clients in Symbian, S60, and URQ, such as a most of the Nokia smartphones these days, I believe Motorola also has it. Has it? Um, yes, there's also cl third party clients for common platforms such as Android, Blackberry, iPhone, Palm and Wind Mobile. On one note, I've heard, the, I've heard rumors dropped by Fun and Bowl's CEO that the new Palm Pre has a SyncML engine provided by them. He said on his blog, he didn't, in a sort of roundabout fashion, he said that uh, the Palm Pre is using the best sync engine available, so it's good news, <laughs> I hope. Now we're diving into the Fun and Bowl aspects. Fun and Bowl was originally started as sync the Sync4j project in 2001. Some of the developers who worked along that project started Fun and Bowl Inc. to provide a commercially supported branch for corporations and carriers. We provided an, uh, they provide an open source device sync, SyncML at the server, and of course the management server as well. It's, it's in pure, the servers are in pure Java, and we focus on mainly on open the over the air sync from a server across the network. We don't really do client, uh, personal sync from such as iSync on Mac OS X. There are open source clients available for many platforms from Funnelball, Outlook, Windows Mobile, iPhone, yes that is open source and in the App Store, iPod, OS X and Thunderbird. The client SDK that powers them is open source as well. You can write your own SyncML client with them. It's available in C++ and Java. A, these are some statistics I was provided, there's 3 million downloads total from since the project started up 30% last year. I was told ac active installations were up 50% in 2008. Interestingly, a majority of them from China. The project's geographically centered in Europe. Uh, a lot of the developers are Italian. So, <laughs> anyway. <it's laughs> I, I, I was going to say something there, but I forgot. <laughs> Oops. Fun by Link sponsors the developments of developers in the form of Code Sniper and Phone Sniper grants. You can, if you have an interesting idea to write for a sync in a, a Fun and Bowl module or either in the client on the server, you can you know, write a proposal and they'll, they'll find it. I'm personally doing this myself with a Google Docs connector. They also pay people to verify it that Fun and Bowl works on their phone, 25 bucks <laughs> US. They have set up a Fun and Bowl, Fun and Bowl Forge, source forge like site for the Fun and Bowl open source projects. Oops. Here's a sample of lots of third party projects f f in the Fun and Bowl ecosystem. The Android client was actually done as a Code Sniper project. It's been out since before the T-Mobile G1 actually. It was programmed against the emulator. There's also a Sync Evolution for Syncing your Evolution client. Um, just a few others. I've placed the stars next to the BlackBerry MS Exchange connectors. They were formerly closed source from Fun and Bolt, but they released them as a, hey, there's not much demand from their customers and they're, they're now being maintained by the community. I want to talk about a very interesting aspect of Fun and Bowl. The server software is on the, under the Faro GPL. The Faro GPL means if you run Fun and Bowl over the network, you have to provide the source code when you're asked. And no software is a service hole, so you can't go off like Google, unfortunately. <laughs> 
normal client libraries are available under the normal GPL v3 and if you really don't want to share anything you can just buy the closed source version this is basically identical but with a few enhancements here is a sync service stack which is what you get when you download Funnelball from their site you have the device sync server which runs under Tomcat it's a standard J2E web app it's an SQ we bundle with a SQL database just to store user and device authentication, passwords, also device capabilities. And you can there are several modules that come with Phoneball. You have a email sync module, a backup style PIN module, and any third party ones you want. On the right side of the screen you have the push a push components. So you have a email listener which pulls your email server. Link f waiting for new mail and it does it tells Funnelball and Funnelball will tell you your client to sync when it's ready. We also have a CTP service which allows push to happen without SMS and behind operator nets. So it will just about everything, everything these days. The device sync server is the main component of Funnelball. It implements sync ML up to 1.2 is very highly configurable and extensible. Handles the most aspects. It parses the sync ML into Java objects, plain old Java objects, and using the JIBX API. You don't really have to concern yourself with that, as it even as it abstracts them even further. It performs a user and device authentication, looking up the data sources that, of each that this user has specified. It, the sync engine does create a sync between the two data sources. So each data source doesn't really have to care about what the other client is. There's a handles the dirty work such as conflict resolution, determining need for data merging and ID mapping. There are three main types of interfaces you can extend Funnelball with. The sync source is the main one. It implements an interface that you expose data to the sync engine with. That's what I've usually done in Funnelball usually in in the box you have a backup style PIM just for backing up your phone contacts and calendar. You also have an email connector. There are a few others such as uh, various groupware modules for MS Exchange and others. You can also build an office, what's called an officer which authenticates clients against any back end you want. In Funnelball, this is by default, Funnelball will just construct a user database as clients perform their first sync. If you want, you can just tell Funnelball to use your own email server as an authentication source. A sync that's a very different one. It's called by the input output pipeline of the server. It allows you to muck with the sync ML just after it's been parsed without any further intervention. We usually use this to when we have non-compliant phones which Put out some very weird iCal data, we have to f which we have to fix. Funnelball ships with around 50 of such scripts, unfortunately. If you want to, when all these modules come in a standard package called an S4J, it's just a very special jar or zip archive. It uses Apache Ant to load them, to install the module and. Fernball provides a module loading, persistence, and administration tool. Dirty work, so you don't have to. You don't have to worry about that. You just have to write the data code. If you, the sync source interface, as I said, is a main interface if you, for a sync data. It only has a handful of or a handful of methods. The main. Oh, that's an exaggeration, actually. <laughs> the sync. Can, the main, the main object you have to concern yourself with is a, what's called a sync item, which encapsulates the sync sync email data command, such as the vcal data I showed earlier. As sync email is data neutral, it's up to the Funnelball is as well. It's up to the sync source to parse and serialize this data. If you want, you can implement more data merging and filtering, but you don't have to. There's a similar interface for the Java and C++ client APIs if you want to just want to run a sync ML client on the client side. Whoops, I'll 
we'll go back. We all settled here. Another, com another common task that people want to do these days is to have push email on their mobile phones. So when a new email arrives on the server, they want their mobile phones to have it instantly. This is why people uh, buy Blackberries, unfortunately. We found out we have a free and open source solution to do this inside the DS server. You DS server manages the pushing of alerts and notifications to the client. On you can tell DS server to fire an alert to sync new email from a web service. This is usually managed by the PIN email or email listener I mentioned earlier, but in guess implement your own with Citadel, which I'm which I'm using, I actually implemented a code to do this within the Citadel service, so it's just instant. There are various ways one can send a notific push notification to a mobile phone. The first is WAP push, just a binary SMS. There's connectionless TCP, which unfortunately requires a public IP or a, or a dr more, to put in a better language, addressable IP, IP between the server and the mobile phone. And the, we have this. We also have connection-oriented TCP called CTP, which will just work about anywhere you can get a constant. TCP connection between the phone and server. It opens a separate separate channel between the server and client that just stays open for the purpose of pushing alerts. So here's, here's what I've been doing for the past three years, unfortunately. <laughs> I've, written a, I've written a whole set of components to sync my data in Citadel with, with a mobile phone. Phone and sits in between. The modules in green are ones that I've written. You have a HTTP authentication for authentication, authenticating the user credentials on their mobile phone with the group web server. The group dev connector syncs our calendar and our contacts. I also, written a, I also wrote a new email connector just for Citadel bec because I you know, due to scalability issues and config ease of use. The only new code I had to put in Citadel, as I mentioned, was a email alert mechanism so when new email arrives it, it phone and bolt basically knows instantly and the whole push process can begin. And for well piece we're only on our own time but if you want to find out more you can go to forge.funbowl.org and download phone and bowl. There's also a phone and bowl also held a developers workshop in, workshop in Italy last year. There's a few interesting interesting presentations of the server architecture and a few people who have integrated Fireball into their environments, so it's a very interesting specific presentations. If you want to get if you want to get dirty, <coughs> excuse me, you can download the SyncML specifications direct from OMA. Any questions? <laughs> I'm hoping. Yes. Oh. Good. Uh, the question was how heavy the Fun and Bowl stack is, uh, mem size and memory wise. The Fun and Bowl downloads around 120 meg compressed, extracts into a, a 250 meg directory, and you roughly, I think, you need 128 meg of RAM minimum to run it. It's Java, so. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Any others? Any other yes. Um, how well does it handle devices that discard data that they don't recognize? Say if I have my contacts in KPE, I sync to some phone that's gone, I don't recognize this birthday, I'll throw that away. When I sync back, do I still have the birthday in KPE or is that gone? Uh, the question was how well does phone ball handle devices that throw away data? Um, in SyncML we have this we have a few error codes for 
for clients that just don't reckon, just don't want to parse the data. Which so if the client wants to throw away data, well, it tells the server, and the server just takes a note of that. It'll tell the sync source that the client has discarded the data. So it so your birthday's still there. Okay, the question was regarding uh, SMS pushed and is there connectors provided for different provi connect SMS connectors provided for different providers? Uh, unfortunately, not in the standard distribution. I've written one for Clickertel, uses that API and you can probably use it for various other providers, but unfortunately, not in the standard distribution. You have to write your own. Okay. Uh, the question was regarding if there are any SaaS providers running Funnelball for their users. I believe one one AG, uh, actually not one one. Uh, Rackspace has a subsidiary called Now Trust, which has contributed to the Funnelball development. They're using Funnelball themselves, and they they run a product with Funnelball and built. Funnelball also provides a portal called My Funnelball, which you can just plug in your email, provide the details, and they'll they'll handle it for you for free. We have a few ads, unfortunately, but there you go. Any others? Oh, if there's no other questions, join me in thanking Matthew Brewster. Thank